Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and Mora's Drawings, and podcast 3.3 is Stoic and Lemon Treating Reactants, it's a ton of math, so make sure you have your periodic table and calculator ready, so let's get started. Hi! Answer the following question about a pure compound that contains only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's Cho. We did a problem like this in class, that was Chan, this is just Cho. A 0.7549 gram sample of compound O2 produces 1.9061 grams CO2 and 0 0.3370 grams of H2O. Calculate the individual mass of C, H, and O in the 0.7549 sample. So if we burn something, CHO, and this introduces the reactions a little bit, plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O. So what happens here is all of your CO2, all of the carbon in CHO, goes into CO2. All of the hydrogen in CHO goes into H2O. So that means I can figure out how much carbon and hydrogen by reverse engineering that. So if I have 1.9061 grams of carbon, I can figure out my percent carbon and carbon dioxide. So I guess I didn't want to write that just yet. Uh -huh, sorry. Um, so carbon is 12.01 grams. That's from the periodic table. And CO2 is 44. Mm, 44.01 grams from the periodic table times 100. Well, really, you know, I'm going to use the decimal form. And I'm going to get 0 0.2727. And that means 27.27% of CO2 is carbon. So if I have 1.9061 grams, then 0 0.2727 of 1.9061 is the mass of Carbon. Now, I sadly only have a little bit of calculator. Let's hope this does it. 2727 times 1.9061. Oops, yeah. Equals 0.51979 grams of carbon. Now it says calculate the individual mass of carbon. I should have rounded that a little better. 0 0.520 grams of carbon. Three sig figs. Woohoo. Um, same thing for H and water. So hydrogen, there's two of them. So each hydrogen weighs 1.01. So this is 2.02 .02 over 18.02 equals 2.02, .02, oops, divided by, oops, 2.02 .02 divided by 18.02 .02 .02 is 0.1121. So 11.21% of water is hydrogen. So 0 0.1121 times 0.3370 will give me my mass of hydrogen. So times 0.337 is 0 0.0378 grams of hydrogen. Okay, so if I know how many grams of carbon, how many grams of hydrogen, then I know how many grams of oxygen are left over. Now I can't do the percentage of oxygen in either one of those because I might have leftover oxygen. Some of the oxygen comes from here, so that's a tough deal to do. So the last part for number one would be the compound is 0.7549 grams of CHO minus 0.520 grams of C minus 0.0378 grams of H equals grams of O. 0.7549 minus 0.52 minus 0.0378 is 0.197 grams of oxygen. Ooh, okay. Determine the empirical formula of the compound. Well, I've got my grams of each one of these. So what I'm going to do when I do empirical formulas is change them each into moles. Bam. Grams carbon. One mole of carbon. Carbon is 12.01. Boop. And then grams of hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen, 1 1.01. 16.0 grams of oxygen, one mole of oxygen. So, 0 0.1971, since I have that in my calculator, divided by 16 is 0 0.0123 moles. Um, one, uh, whoops, clear. Doo -doo -doo. 0.0378 divided by 1.01 is 
0.0374 moles. And then 0 0.520 divided by, whoops, 0 0.520 divided by 12.01 is 0 0.0433. So then what I need to do is divide by the smallest one. Divided by 0 0.0123, divided by 0 0.0123. Divided by 0 0.0123. So divided by 0.0120. Oops. So 0.0433 divided by 0.0123 is 3.5. 0.0433 divided by 0.0123 is 3. And that's 1. So now to make these whole numbers, I've got to multiply them each by a 2. So that means I'm going to get this one right here is carbon, right? C7. This right here is hydrogen. Um, H3. Nope, H double it. H6. And then this last part is O2. There you go. So chemical equations. You've got to be able to pick what these things are. Symbols and chemical reactions. We need to know that's a little s, that's a little g, sometimes a little up arrow. Precipitate is a little down arrow, sometimes a little s. Liquid, very rare, pretty much only water. You almost never have a pure liquid in anything. Um, H2O2 is another one that's frequently a liquid, but that's about it. Aqueous, anything you think is a liquid is usually aqueous. And a catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction without being used up, and it rides on the arrow. So if zinc was a catalyst, zinc would be riding along right there. Okay? Kind of like, what's our catalyst to make Fridays happy? <gasps> a snack. And that's a great catalyst. Or extra credit when it's a Friday. Yay! Ions are always aqueous. So whenever anything's an ion, it's going to be written as aqueous. Strong acids and bases are always written as ions. So your strong acids and bases, you need to know them. HCl, HBr, there's six of them you need to know. Um, HI, HNO3, H2SO4, um, HClO4. So they're never written together like I just wrote them. They're always written as ions. So, oh, strong bases are group 1, N2, Hydroxides, and a hydroxide is an OH negative. Okay. Soluble salts in water are written as ions. So soluble salt in water is do, 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 um, are written as ions. So as long as you know it's soluble, you write it as an ion. Weak acids and bases are written as compounds. It's still aqueous, but just not ions. Gases are written as compounds. They are also still, I mean, gases, usually you almost never have a gas dissolved, but that's it. Soluble salts and water is written as ions. There are a very few solubility rules you need to know. Solubility words you, rules you need to know are group 1 ions are aqueous. Um, nitrates are aqueous. I should say nitrates. Um, acetates. And NH4s are aqueous. If you know that, you get away with pretty much everything else. Um, chlorides are aqueous, except AgCl, whoops, for Ag positive, Pb, Cl2, and silver lead and mercury. So those guys are the precipitates you need to know. And the other precipitate you need to know, you need to know that barium sulfate is a precipitate. If you know those precipitates, you've known all the ions you'd know for the past 10 years of AP chemistry. Right, melts a net equation for the reaction of calcium phosphate and phosphoric acid to form calcium dihydrogen phosphate. So calcium phosphate, so the net equation, we assume everything is aqueous. So calcium phosphate, they tell us it's aqueous. Calcium phosphate. Notice how I don't even have to crisscross the charges. Phosphoric acid, not strong. So it's not strong, I have to write it as ions. H positive plus H2PO4. Hope you know phosphoric acid is H3PO4, but I write it as ions to form calcium dihydrogen phosphate. Now it says it forms calcium dihydrogen phosphate, so if it forms this, that's my precipitate, and it would tell you that, solid. So I'm going to make CA 
dihydrogen phosphate, calcium's still plus 2. Phosphate's still minus 1. So this product is going to be Ca, parentheses, H2PO4, taken twice. Shh, not that. So what happened to the H positive? Well, it won't really make anything else. Because what these two would make would be, um, wouldn't make anything else. They would be spectator ions, because you'd get your H positive, and you get your phosphate left over. And those would cancel out. So when you're finished, this, really, you don't write it at all. You don't leave it scratched out like I'm doing. Um, you just get your final answer right here of calcium, dihydrogen, phosphate. Put a little down arrow. Um, what's nice about AP chemistry is they don't obsess about what the state of matter is. But remember, anything with a charge is aqueous for us. What is the balance equation for the combustion of octane? Now, combustion means um, making the most common oxide. Making, whoa, I misspelled making. Welcome to third grade. Making the most common oxide. Okay, so C8H18 plus O2. If you want to make an oxide, you got to add oxygen. Most common oxide of carbon, CO2. Hey, I've heard of that. Most common oxide of hydrogen, H2O. Hey, I've heard of that. That's it. And if I want to balance it, what I do, I suppose I should teach you guys how to balance again. If you're looking to balance, um, you want to have the same number of carbons on both sides. So to get eight carbons on the left, I'll throw an eight right here. And if I want to get nine hydrogens, or I'm sorry, 18 hydrogens over here, I throw a nine here. Nine times two is 18. Okay. Now here's our problem. For my oxygens to balance, I have 16 plus nine. That's 25 O's. So in my perfect world, I would put right here 25 halves times two would give me the right number. Well, you know what? That kind of stinks because we don't like to have fractions in here. So what I'm going to do is I have 1, 25 halves, 8, 9. I want to get a whole number. I double everything. 2. 25 over 2 times 2 is the glorious 25. 8 times 2, 16. 9 times 2 is 18. Combustion of CS2. CS2 plus O2 give you the most common oxides of each. Most common oxide of carbon is CO2. Most common oxide of sulfur, hey, you're going to learn something here, is SO2, which smells like rotten eggs. Woo. A little bit different than the smell whoops, than the smell of South Campus when it's 100 degrees, but not too different. Stoichiometry, the mathematics of chemical equation. Calculations based on chemical formulas or equations always go through mole, 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 mole. In your book, yeah, you have one. Number 126. Is nitric acid is made commercially by the Ostwald process, represented by the following equations. Blah, 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 blah. What mass of NH3 must be used to make 1 times 10 to the 6 kilograms of HNO3? Assume 100% yield. So what mass of NH3 must be used to make 1 times 10 to the so 1 million kilograms of HNO3? Woo, doggies. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip back and forth through this. So the next page is blank for me. So I'm going to start with, now, I like to do my stuff in grams because that makes a lot more sense to me for my periodic table numbers. So I'm going to hop into that. So that would be 1 times 10 to the ninth grams. A billion grams. So 1 E9 grams of HNO3. And my goal is to get into grams of NH3. Okay. So I'm going to start off with, I hate you, grams of HNO3. And I'm going to go into moles of HNO3. Except for I put N first. One mole. Um, oxygen, three oxygens weigh 48. One nitrogen is 14.01. And then hydrogen is 1.01. Oh, no. I have a bad calculator and I did that wrong. 48 plus 14.01 plus 1.01 is 63.02. Then I know I want to get out of moles of nitric acid. And let's see what I can go into. So if I am in moles of nitric acid I'm trying to get here, should I go into water or should I go into NO2? Well, I should go into NO2 because that will then get me out of here. Okay? So water is no good to me. So two moles of HNO3 makes three moles of NO2. 2 moles of HNO3 makes 3 moles of NO2. Okay? Do you see how those equivalencies come from the balanced equation? 
Now I want to change my NO2 into NO, and that's a 2 to 2 ratio. So 2 moles of NO2 makes 2 moles of something else, and I forgot what it was. Now, why did I choose NO instead of oxygen? Well, because NO is in the equation I'm trying to get into. So that's 2 NOs. 2 moles of NO. Then I have 4 moles of NO to 4 moles of NH3. And I just want to make sure the question did ask for grams. What mass? Yep. So I'm in moles of NH3. I want to get out of moles of NH3 and go into grams of NH3. Okay. Little g stands for grams. Little g stands for go to the periodic table. Nitrogen is 14.01 plus each oxygen, so times 3. So three actions are 3.03, .03, so I'm looking at 17.04. Okay. Now I'm literally using a calculator from someone's wallet. So instead of 1 E9, I'm just going to tag that E9 on the end. So I'm going to do 1 divided by 63.02 times 3 divided by 2 times 17.04. I hope you could tell why I canceled those. You're times 2 divided by 2 times 4 divided by 4. And I have 0 0.406 E9. Now, you have a better calculator than me. So if I move this decimal over 1, that would be 4.06 E8 grams of NH3. Now, we assumed 100% yield. But what I want to make sure that you see is all of this is based on equivalencies. Two of this equals three of that. Two of this equals two of that. Four of this equals four of that. So the, that's why we use coefficients, because they equal each other. Number 134 in Zoomdahl. Another, I call this serial stoichiometry, because you do it in a series. Doop, 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 doop. Not cereals like cornflakes or whatever it is. Frosted flakes, way better. Acetaminophen is produced in the following steps. Blah, 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 blah. The first two reactions have an 87% and 98% yield, respectively. So I don't get what I expect. I get 0.87 and I get 0.98. The overall reaction yields 3 moles of acetaminophen product for every 4 moles of C6H5O3N reacted. So if I look here, I'm going to go from this guy. Um, for everyone else, uh, okay. And I'm going to turn him into Chonkel here. I'm going to turn Chonkel into just 7 on. I'm going to turn just 7 on into C8H9O2 negative. Now, there are no coefficients here, and this scares me. So I've got, oh, there's a coefficient. <gasps> it's balanced. That's wonderful. So what that means is if everything that I've converted into has a coefficient of 1, that means 3 moles of acetaminophen. This means 4 moles should make give me 4 moles, but I only get 3 moles. Well, what percentage is 3 out of 4? Hey, that's 0.75, or 75%, right? What does the percent yield by mass for the overall process? Oh, that's not too bad. 0.75 or 75%, right? What does the percent yield by mass for the step 1? So I could say if I start with 4 times 0.87, right? That's the percentage of that and then I get 98% of that, then I get x percent of that equals 3. So let's do that math. Not 0.3, just 3. So clear in my cheese ball calculator, 3 divided by 4 divided by 0.87 divided by 0.98, and I hope I get a number less than 1, and I get x equals 0.88, or 88% is the yield for step 3. Right, so this is my start, step one, step two, step three, and this is my final. Not bad. It's quicker than I thought. Limiting reagents. Ooh. Process. So what happens for a limiting reagent is I have reactant one plus reactant two yields product one plus product two. What I do is I convert each reactant into product do, 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 into the same same product. Whichever reactant produces less is the limiting reactant. The reactant that produces the most product is excess. Excess. 
Real AP problem. I think you have this on the sheet I gave you. Answer the following questions that relate to chemical reactions. Um, iron 3 oxide can be blah, 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 blah. A, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what happens here is, oh, man, you know what? This is a bad one because I did not convert this. How shameful for me. We don't know how to do that yet. Oh, I'm going to cough. Excuse me. <coughs> Okay, so my first problem is I don't know how many moles of CO2 there are because I didn't teach you that yet. So what I'm going to say is I'm just going to make it a little simple and just say this is 1.25 moles. That'll be given to you, okay? 1.25 moles of CO is combined with 15.39 grams of Fe2O3. What is the limiting reactant for the reaction? Just five with whatever it is and calculate them out how many moles of iron are formed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 1.25 moles of CO, and I'm going to convert it into iron. And I chose iron instead of CO2 because that's what question 3 says. So moles of co. And I'm going to go right into moles of phi. Now I can go right moles into moles, because when you're in moles, you can go into moles, right? You don't have to go through grams. You don't have to go through grams. You always have to go through moles. So 2 moles of iron, 3 moles of co. And I can do that in my head, 250 divided by 3. And I am afraid I'd mess it up. So it is 0.833 moles of phi. Now if I have 15.39 grams of Fe2O3, this time I do have to go through grams because I'm in grams, Fe2O3, moles Fe2O3. One mole. So iron is 55.85 times 2. And then each action is 16, so plus 48, 159.7. And then one mole of Fe2O3, two moles of iron. And again, these numbers, moles over moles, these are coefficients. Coefficient of 1, coefficient of 2. And I guess I just ask for moles, huh? So I can stop there. So 15.39 divided by 159.7 times 2. 0.193 moles of Fe, not FFE. Okay? So how much, what is the limiting reactant? Okay, this one made less. So the limiting reactant is not 0.193 moles of iron. The limiting reactant is Fe2O3. Um, because it makes less. This is my answer for number three. Because it is the lesser amount that's made. Percent yield. Re reactions typically do not get 100% yield. Uh, instead of the word typically, I want to put it to the word never. Why? Side reaction. So 100% yield would be like... Um, People always marry the love of their lives 100% of the time. Now, this could happen, but I doubt it. Let's say there's a boy named Freddy. And Freddy could have the love of his life is sitting somewhere waiting for Freddy dreamily. Oh, Freddy. What happens? A side reaction could happen. Some chicky could say, oh, that Freddy. I'm going to marry Freddy. He's not perfect for me, but I'm going to steal Freddy away. Oh, that's sad. And this little girl could be waiting for Freddy in, um, let's say, oh, I don't know, L.A. And there's a transfer issue. Well, Freddy's going to take a flight to L.A., but Freddy's afraid to fly. Oh, now in chemistry terms, that means if you're in a beaker and you pour it from one beaker into another beaker, there's always a little bit left. There's a drop or two left over, so you get that. Or incomplete reactions. So what happens is Freddy and the chick could start dating, but then something happens on the side that doesn't happen. Okay, so they date, but they don't marry. Oh, and that's sad. Okay, now in reality, the reason why you get an incomplete reaction is they might never actually meet. Oh, Freddie might never go to Los Angeles, and the girl waiting for Freddie in Los Angeles might not happen, and Freddie is wooed by some goat herder in Afghanistan or something. Calculate the percent yield by actual measured yield. That means a lab result divided by the theoretical calculated yield. Actual over theoretical times 100. The reaction of 11.9 grams of chuckle 3 with excess chlorine. Now, excess chlorine, the excess part means you don't have to do a limiting reactant problem. So I have 11.9 grams of chuckle 3. 
and it produces 12.0 grams of CCL4. That's how much you really got. So what we have to do is figure out how much you should have gotten. So 11.9 grams of chuckle 3, except for I forgot my ch and chuckle. And I'm going to convert into that same number. So grams of chuckle 3. Why can't I get chuckle 3 right? I mean, the name is so obvious. One mole of chuckle 3. So little g means grams, little g means go to the periodic table. So 12.01 plus 1.01 plus 35.45, plus 35.45, plus 35.45. Yeah, I don't have parentheses on my calculator. That's 119.37 grams. That's moles. And I need to convert that into grams, the other one. So one mole of chuckle three. Why do I keep doing that? And moles of CCL4. Oops. This isn't 1. Moles over moles use coefficients. 2 over 2. And then I figure out grams of CCL4. 1 mole CCL4. Grams of CCL4. So I'm going to embarrass myself again by 30. Well, 35.45 times 4 plus 12.01 equals 153.81. So clear, clear. 11.9 divided by 119.37 times 2 divided by 2 times 153.1 is 15.3. Yeah. So my percent yield is my actual yield, 12, divided by 15.3. So clear, clear, clear. 12 divided by 15.3 equals 78%. Please be there. woo -hoo! On my calculator, it says 78.4. Eh, get over yourself. We're all finished. That was a long one. Sorry about that. Toodles. Go Notre Dame.